Hi, my name is Emily Chase, and we have another different video today. So, the week I'm filming this is British Science Week, so I decided to make a video about something which really puzzled me. A while ago, I was in a chemistry lesson, and we were learning about elements in the periodic table. Basically, the definition for relative atomic mass is the weighted mean mass of an atom of an element compared with 1 12th the mass of an atom of carbon-12. Sound complicated? I assure you, it's not. Let me move back a bit. Atoms, the things which make up everything, are made up themselves of three types of subatomic particle. Protons with a relative mass of one, neutrons also with a relative mass of one, and electrons with a mass so small we don't count it. Of course, these are on a relative scale, as the real masses are far too small to use accurately. Still with me? Back to carbon. Carbon-12, as said by the definition, is the anchor for all the masses of the other elements in the periodic table, as it has six protons and six neutrons, each with a mass of one, which add up to make the mass of 12. It occurred to me that this is surely an inaccurate measure, as carbon has isotopes. which is carbon, but lighter or heavier. I agree that carbon is an important element, as it is the basis of all organic compounds and life on Earth. But it is an inaccurate measure for all other elements. I mean, surely it would be better to use hydrogen-1 with a relative mass of 1 from its 1 proton, or even helium with a relative mass of 4 from its 2 protons and 2 neutrons. So why is carbon the anchor mass. I did some research and it comes down to an argument between two types of scientists. Chemicals, reactions, reflux, <laughs> This is my impression of a chemist. Forces, quantum mechanics, space. This is my impression of a physicist. Originally, both types of scientists used different scales to measure the mass of atoms. Ooh, look at me. I use isotopes of oxygen, such as oxygen 16, 17 and 18, as a basis for measuring the mass of atoms. This makes sense because they are naturally occurring in the air. Well, look at me. I use pure oxygen 16 for even though you can't get pure oxygen 16, because surely it is better than a mixture of isotopes which will just be inaccurate. Uh, enough of the joking. It's a good mass to use because we like to use mass spectrometry. Both methods worked for each type of scientist, but it made it very difficult when it came to sharing results. How can you handle so many versions of oxygen? It will be impossible for me to get accurate results. You can talk. You don't take into account how many common isotopes of oxygen there are. Your calculations will never be compatible with the results you get in practical experiments. Grrr. As you can tell, the two different measurement systems weren't working. Grrr. So they decided to come up with a compromise. Stop! This is stupid. Let's compromise. Fine that they would universally use carbon-12 as the basis for relative atomic mass. That way, neither of them had to decide which way to use oxygen. And both scientists were happy. It is the ending. I suppose so? And uh, carbon-13, which is the only other stable isotope of carbon, makes up only about 1.1% of carbon, so it doesn't make that much of a difference. And anyway, we take that into account. Thank you. And thank you both for your arguments, and thank you for watching. Please leave any comments you would like to on this video. Have a great day.